life is a nightmare And that's the way it's dream Life is a nightmare Welcome to Today in Horrible History, your daily moment of historical misfortune. For January 22nd, 2022, we travel back to January 22nd, 1957. On that date, New York City's mad bomber, George Peter Metesky, was finally arrested after having planted 30 bombs around New York City over nearly two decades, injuring 15 people. George Metesky was born in 1903 and served in the Marine Corps during World War I as an electrician. Upon returning home to Connecticut, he got a job as an electrician for the Consolidated Edison Utility, or Con Ed. A boiler accident in 1931 severely damaged his lungs and eased the path for a tuberculosis infection that plagued him for decades. In 1936, his workers' compensation claim was tossed out of court on a technicality with the claim he waited too long to file. This embittered Metesky, who later claimed to have mailed several hundred appeals to Con Ed and local politicians, totaling over 800,000 words without ever receiving as much as a postcard in reply. At that point, George decided to take things into his own hands and started planting bombs throughout New York City in public places all while sending a series of anonymous letters to local newspapers decrying Con Ed, typically with the catchphrase, Dastardly Deeds. Here's the text of one such missive. Bombs will continue until the Consolidated Edison Company is brought to justice for their dastardly acts against me. I have exhausted all other means. I intend with bombs to cause others to cry out for justice for me. Some 30 bombs exploded in public areas such as Pennsylvania Station, the New York Public Library, the Subway, Grand Central Station, Radio City Music Hall, and several times in movie theaters, typically stuffed in seat cushions. Curiously being a patriot, Metesky halted his bombing campaign for the duration of World War II as one wouldn't want to disrupt global warfare with bombs. The Metesky case was a notable early application of criminal profiling in which investigators with little to work on built a profile in which the subject would fit. They surmised correctly that George would be revealed to be an unmarried electrician with paranoid schizophrenia and would probably, based on his handwriting and phrasing, live in a Slavic community in the Connecticut suburbs. Obviously, he'd been a Con Ed employee. Metesky was eventually caught by police, by them asking Con Ed repeatedly to review their old employee files and find someone who would fit said profile. A clerk named Alice Kelly discovered the Metesky file marked workers' compensation and injustice <laughs> more than two years after Con Ed effectively hampered police efforts by falsely claiming employee files prior to 1940 had been destroyed. Metesky quickly confessed to the bombings. He was found guilty of a wide variety of charges, including attempted murder and trafficking weapons across state lines, while he claimed his bombs were deliberately too small to kill. Metesky was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and ordered to serve a lengthy sentence in a state mental hospital. It was assumed he would die shortly of tuberculosis, but recovered. In 1973, a Supreme Court decision on stuffing inmates in mental hospitals forced Metesky's release into a parole program. He died quietly at home in 1994 at age 90. One final thought from Metesky. Quote, When a motorist injures a dog, he must report it. Not so with an injured workman. He rates less than a dog. I tried to get my story to the press. Nobody cared. I determined to make these dastardly acts known. I have had plenty of time to think. I decided on bombs. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Today in Horrible History. Remember that after a brief visit, the rest of your day can only seem better in comparison. Life is a nightmare And that's the way it's dream Life is a nightmare